John Paul Gates is an actor who's starred in 84 feature films and he's with us today. How are you doing? I'm all right, Toby. And uh, may I say it's a beautiful day down here. I don't know what it's like up in Scotland, but um, yeah, we're oh, yeah, uh, very nice. Indeed, indeed. So at least at least even though we've got all these Brexit issues, at least uh, <laughs> we're, we're sharing something which is uh, sunlight and warmth, you know? Yes, it's been a very nice couple of days. And you have recently starred in this brand new film called Nest of Vampires. And I think it would be beneficial to just describe the basic plot of the film to us. Yeah, well, it uh, focuses on a uh, British intelligence agent who unfortunately has his wife murdered Mm. and uh, his daughter kidnapped. And he pursues uh, and tracks down the it happens to be a human trafficking group yeah. um that's taken abducted his daughter and he pursues them one by one and um they are actually a vampiric cult Ooh. um and i play one of the henchmen uh who's uh really you see at the start of the film uh who uh, kills um, his daughter, sorry, kills his wife yeah. and uh, abducts his daughter. Uh, so, and what's interesting uh, is that I suppose you've got this mixture of genres because, you know, to all intents and purposes, it's a vampire film, mm. but actually you're mixing espionage with vampirology, yeah. which is kind of interesting, you know, from yeah. that perspective. And you play Mario, as you mentioned, the guy that kills his wife and abducts his daughter at the start. Was it your choice to make him Italian, or was that in the script and you had to kind of perfect the accent yourself? Well, yes. Uh, I mean, in essence, that's the great thing about Chris Sanders, the director. Mm. You know, he allows one to improvise. And uh, when we were originally talking about uh, this particular character, you know, he suggested, obviously, um, he wanted to make him Italian. Yeah. So I said it would be kind of interesting to uh, have him speak Italian mm. uh, and then uh, ham, up the, ham up the accent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because what I was trying to do was to base him, base him on one of the original vampire elders uh, an Italian called Ambrogio, who thousands of years ago was on a pilgrimage to Greece. And the Greek gods took umbrage to him and cursed him mm. and made him, you know, vampiric. Um, so when he returned to Florence, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, uh, he created allegedly the first vampire clan which then of course there was infighting within that particular clan and then they subdivided and formed other clans yeah. um so so yeah so so from that perspective because uh the way i saw him is that you know he's been killing for centuries um and you'll you'll see within the within the uh supposedly within the subtext you know he's He's, he's, he's almost like a jaded mercenary, mm. you know what I mean? So yeah. he does things for money. That's the, that's the first thing. Um, so the, it really, he's done so much killing that he's jaded. And the only thing that's, I suppose, the means to an end is the money that he receives. Yeah, absolutely. And you've mainly played villains in a lot of the films you've done. Is that something that you tend to be good at? Because a lot of time in acting, to do a character is a part of yourself. So I'm assuming that you're not some sort of murderer in your spare time. No, no. But it's interesting (laughs) you say that because uh, years ago, uh, I did a film called Messages, um, Mm. starring Jeff Fay from The Lawnmower Man and uh, Lost... Uh, Bruce Payne from Passenger 57 and Marty Cove from the Cobra Kai TV series. Mm. And in it, I play a serial killer. And of course, I was, you know, we're talking 2005 when we shot this film. And, you know, how do you prepare for a serial killer? It's not as though you can go out and support victims, otherwise you get arrested, (laughs) you know, in, in terms of, you know, practicing the method. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, it was a lot of research um, and 
similarly with any character I portray, it's all about the research. But yeah, you're right. I, I do specialize in being evil. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's not because I am evil. If, if I, I, hope to, I, I, I kind of think that, you know, um, like with anything, it is acting. So yeah. it's, um, it's, it's really suspending disbelief. But you're right. You yeah. do. Obviously, I do have some traits that uh, that I'm able to draw upon, mm. um, and as a result, bring that into any character I portray. Yeah. Do you sometimes worry about being typecast because you've played a villain in a lot of things? Like people might not cast you to be a good guy if you wanted to do that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, Toby. I mean, when I, when I first started my career, I was playing, you know, more. Uh, protagonists yeah. whereas obviously now i'm in my you know uh well let's say uh um well you'll probably know from uh wikipedia i old how old i am i'm 41 yeah. so well i'm 41 next week actually but Ooh. um um but um yeah i mean gone are the days where i'm going to be cast as a romantic lead and really to be honest yeah. with you my my uh features don't necessarily transcend to playing that so yeah. so really i mean look um yeah, you're right uh one sometimes is is concerned but to be honest with you i'd rather work than not yeah if you know what that's I mean. true so, so, and this, the problem is is that there's always this inverse relationship between um you know supply and demand there's too many too many actors out there chasing too few jobs yeah so as a result you know you have really at the end of the day you have to go with what you're good at and and um as long as the role is slightly different where you can bring something new um then that's fine as far as i'm concerned yeah absolutely so how did you first start to get interested in acting in the first place well, it's interesting, actually, because I, I started off, um, I, I, I never wanted to become an actor. I, I, I uh, always aspired to become a professional footballer. And uh, I was, I was um, on, on Notts County's books uh, as, a, as a teenager. Yeah. And then I got an injury. Um, and uh, it was an injury to my Achilles. And at that time, um my you know my contract wasn't kind of renewed so what happened was is that um i decided to kind of get into acting and and funny enough i i um i was uh, very fortunate to be cast in the bbc soap el dorado which you're too young to uh, remember <laughs> um and in a way that casting i suppose focused my well, re-diverted my energies towards, you know, being someone else as opposed mm. to uh, being an athlete, you know. So, so yeah, I mean, it was, I suppose, in a way, it was a freak injury that uh, allowed me to discover other things about myself, you know, and I've been, thankfully, yeah. um, and very fortunate to be doing it ever since. Yeah, it's strange how often bad things can change your life for the good. Indeed, sir, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. And you've done 84 feature films over the years. Are there any that stand out to you and you remember particularly? It's a very hard question, that, Toby. And yeah. the reason being is because different different films stand out at different times, you know. Yeah. And um, I, I suppose um, in terms of... Um, <sighs> I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Nest of Vampires, yeah. which is out now, what, what I liked about that was the fact that, you know, I'm able to speak in Italian and do an accent. And I suppose, yeah. like with anything as an actor, you're always wanting to be totally different to what you are. Yeah. So the fact that I'm speaking another language and doing an accent, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose, um, let's see, I did a film called Hawk and the Dove up in Scotland many, many years ago. Uh, that What was interesting about that is that it was, I suppose, a homage to natural born killers where I mm -hmm. play this accountant who you think is very meek and mild, but it turns out he's actually quite psychotic. That was mm -hmm. interesting to portray. Um, but I've, you know what? I've played so many different characters and, and th there's always that, I, I suppose it's, it's very difficult to compare um, what you get out of it, uh, what 
how successful that film is. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. always that you're reconciling you think things together. Um, um, uh, so it's, it's, it's really tough. I mean, I did a film called Carmen's Kiss with Hugo Spear from the Four Monty and um, also Bruce Payne from Passenger 57. And, and that's based on Bizet's opera, Carmen. Mm. So I played a henchman in that, but this oh. this guy was very naive, <laughs> um, and I really enjoyed that because I had to break down a lot, and it, it was it's very emotional the journey that that character went through. So from that perspective, I was, uh, you know, that was an in- interesting uh, facet to portray. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it, it's re- it's really tough. It's really tough to answer that question. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah. For sure. And was this Nest of Vampires film filmed during the pandemic or did you manage to finish it before? Well, I think actually, funny enough, it started uh, back in early uh, 2020. Uh I came on board uh, when they'd shot, I think, 50 or 60 percent of the movie. Mm. Um, So I started shooting my scenes just after we came out of lockdown in July. Of 2020, yeah. and then I went backwards and forwards to to complete it. Yeah. Um, but it was an interesting experience. I mean, I mean, from my perspective, I mean, even though in 2020 we were locked down for pretty much five or six months out of that year. I mean, I had my busiest year ever: eight <laughs> movies, two indie TV series, and three short films. Wow. You know, so so. But then again, you know, um, like with anything, you have to take the rough with the smooth, whereas 2021 so far has been very, very quiet, you know. Um, yeah. So it's it's just it's just the way things way things happen you know what i mean yeah that's interesting i suppose it's easier with tv because you know theater actors have had it hard because they have to actually have an audience attend whereas tv you can kind of have restrictions or whatever and people can still just watch it in their home yeah they can the the the, the problem is though toby is that you know uh, as uh, the scientists are discovering more aspects or discovering more more about COVID-19 the yeah. fact is, is that what's happening is that there's more restrictions being placed on film production so for example yeah. I know in TV a lot of directors I know uh, who, are, who are currently working they're saying that they've got this issue where the actors can't be any close than two meters to one another yeah. um, and you'll see on EastEnders for example where you know, the actors are having to do uh, the scene without the actor being there because it once oh, yeah. they encroach that two metre space, then, of course, um, they're infringing COVID protocols. So so I suppose from that issue, um, you know, COVID-19 is having obviously an adverse effect, but now every, yeah. most of the population is getting inoculated. Hopefully that will be, a you know, COVID-19 will be a distant memory. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're not long now, hopefully. Indeed. Yeah. So if we're interested in having a watch of Nest of Vampires, where are we able to find it? Yeah, well, you can go to um, the website, which is www.nestofvampires.com. It's available to rent and to buy. Um, I think the prices are, it's in dollars. I think it's $4.99 to rent and then $10 Ten dollars to to buy, um, and it's you know I mean what what's great Toby is that uh, we're having so many positive reviews. I mean yeah. really we we are for for a micro budget feature. Um, you know I'm I'm you know I'm thrilled you know for Chris the director and uh, obviously his journey and uh, also it's nice to be you know hopefully um, within the horror genre I will. Uh, get some more work out of it and Mario Donato will become, you know, uh, a cult figure, you know, yeah. it'd be nice to have a, um, an action figure made out of Mario. It'd be kind of fun that, you know? Yeah. I was going to ask if there's maybe a sequel, but then your character wouldn't be in it, would he? If that's spoiling anything. No, I, he wouldn't actually, unfortunately. No. Yeah. So I, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, Chris, I would imagine he's a very much in demand person now. Um, mm. Um, and um, I know he's got a few projects in the works, which uh, we're talking about. But um, as I say, um, as far as sequels are concerned, uh, obviously that's a question that must be posed to him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank (laughs) you very much for coming on the show today. 
No worries, Toby, and uh, thanks for inviting me. And uh, I see that uh, I know that, that your uh, listeners won't be able to see this, but I see you've got the Muppets in the in the back there. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So are you are you a big fan? Yes, and you know, on this show we had Steve Wetmeyer who played Kermit the Frog for twenty seven years, and Bill Barretta who currently plays Rolf the Dog and the Swedish Chef and everything. So you're not the only acting royalty we've had. <laughs> Oh, well, that's very kind, Toby. That's very kind. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I assume that I mean, from your perspective, I was just, I was just curious. I mean, is is horror? I mean, does your show folk? Well, obviously, it doesn't focus just on horror, yeah. but it is horror. Maybe one of your um, one of your favorite uh, film genres. I suppose so, because it's the most gripping. You know, it's never boring because it keeps you on edge all the time. So yeah, I suppose I like it. Splendid, splendid, yeah. fantastic. All right, well, listen, man. Um, uh, nice talking to you, and keep on uh, consuming blood and uh, <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>